<laughs> All right. Now, first things first, you have to know that this picture right here behind me is straight. It's hanging straight on my wall. I had something with this camera. It's driving me absolutely bananas that I can't uh, get it to straighten up in the camera. <laughs> anyway, on to something a little bit more interesting. Uh, Swami Vivekananda, I was reading today, uh, came up with a marvelous way of living in this world well, without getting caught up or deluded by it. It's a very simple instruction, just like the rest of them. It's just a matter of us keeping it in our mind instead of getting all caught up in our own stories during the day that get us all bent out of shape. He says, this world is a play. So it's a play. We're sitting in the audience. Yourself, this image of yourself that's behind your eyes, that which watches your mind, watches your body, listens to your ears, that, that unchanging self is in the audience watching a play and the play is happening in its mind. The play is happening in its body. And the story is being told by this mind and body, very much like the play on the stage. So he says, and you are his playmates. You're engaged in this world, in you uh, by identifying with it, by thinking it is your own. You have become part of the play, like an audience member who's been called out by one of the stars on the stage and becomes part of the play. You get pulled into <laughs> to the story itself. You're no longer just the observer. And he says, go on and work without any sorrow, without any misery. There's a tall order. But he says, go ahead, be a part of the play that you believe that yourself to be a part of. But do it with freedom. Know that it's a play. Know that you're acting it out, that the story is unreal in its essence. Go on and work without any sorrow, without any misery. See the divine play in the slums, in the saloons. Work to lift people. So that's your role in the play. Work to lift people. Look around you. See and think and create ways of lifting others higher, of being a help uh, to this world, to being your own beautiful self, your gift of love, your gift of service, your gift of wisdom to this play around you. He says, work to lift people, not that they're vile or degraded, not that they need it. God does not say that, he says. It's blasphemy to think that you can help anyone. You know, this in a play, if you're if you're up there on the stage in a play and you think that you're helping someone even though it's your role in the play to to look like you're helping someone, obviously it's a play. There's not anybody helping anybody. Not anybody in need of any help. And he says understand that to be the nature of this world. This world is a manifestation of the divine. There's nothing wrong here. You're not bodies, you're not minds. There's no one dying, there's no one being born, there's no one in need, there's no one hurt. But you act accordingly in this play, motivated by love, by your nature, by that sweetness which is you. It's blasphemy to think that you can help anyone, Vivekananda says. First, root out this idea of helping and go on worshipping. Right? Worshipping is helping without the notion of helping. It's doing it because you have an opportunity to manifest your divine nature, to manifest love. You do it for that sake because that's what, what, what is your joy. That's what manifests your bliss. Serving and loving, caring. We hear it all the time. It's more, it's more beautiful to give than to receive. So live accordingly, he's saying. God's children are your master's children. You're related to everybody here. You are all children of the divine, manifesting this pure love. So see everybody as your own. There are no strangers here. He says you are his servant, the divine, of the divine, of God. Serve the living God, not an imaginary being somewhere up in a painted sky. Not some old man reaching his finger down to touch Adam. <laughs> but serve the living God. Who is the living God? You are the living God. Everyone you know, every living being, everything, every element of this universe is the living God. Serve it all in an attitude of worship, an attitude of deep appreciation and love, adoration. See the divine in everything and worship him by loving the person sitting next to you, loving the cashier, loving the bank teller, 
<laughs> loving the rock, loving the beautiful sun, loving the stray dog. It's what he's telling us. You are his servant. Serve the living God. God comes to you in the blind. God comes to you in the poor, in the weak, in the diabolical. What a glorious chance for you to worship. The moment you think that you're helping, you undo the whole thing and degrade yourself with ego. With ego, that's how you degrade yourself. You take on that idea of me, the doer, and you have to be good enough to help. You have to be better than someone to help them. So you see the egoism that is born. And after a while, you've helped that person and they're so tired of you constantly helping them, they begin to resent your love and your service because it's egoistic, because you're doing it to help them and not just because it's your nature to love and to care. The moment you think that you are helping, you undo the whole thing and degrade yourself. Knowing this work, what follows, you say? You do not get that heartbreak that awful misery that always attends egoistic work. You know, when you're helping that person and they begin to resent you and then you think, how can they resent me? I've done so much for them and I've got so much more to give. I'm not going to help them anymore. And then your love is spoiled by ego. You stop serving because you're not getting the appropriate response, the appropriate gratitude, the appropriate payment. You see, if you don't understand the nature of the game, if you think you're separate and apart from the whole and that it's you that's helping, it's you who's better, who needs to serve, ah, nah, you've lost the point. You're going to suffer. You're going to have a terrible time at it, and you're not going to know why. You're going to think something's terribly wrong with this world instead of understanding it was your ego that was terribly wrong, that led you astray. Do not get that heartbreak, that awful misery. Work is no more slavery when you are no more the doer, when you are simply responding with your nature. It becomes a play, a joy itself, when you know what it is. Work, be unattached. To be unattached means don't identify with any of it, with me and mine. Understand this is all divine. This is all one without a second. This is all a dream happening in, within the mind of the lover. Know it. Nothing's being done. Nothing's being undone. But play your part. Play it with zest and play it well. It becomes a play. Enjoy itself. Work. Be unattached. That is the whole secret, Swami Vivekananda says. If you get attached, you become miserable. So play in this play of the divine. You are that divine, unaware, thinking that you're this small, limited self. Go, serve, love, create beauty, create love, manifest isness everywhere. Know that it's all done as a beautiful worship, an adoration of the perfection of the whole. Don't break yourself off, separate and apart. Make yourself better so that you can serve and give. Understand it's already your nature. You're already pure, beautiful, worthwhile. Go and love. Share this infinite well that's within you. Play the game with great zest, great humility, great service, great love. You are the divine light. If you don't do it, who will? <laughs>